so what is femoral sheath here in this diagram you can see a green colored structure a sheath which is formed by fascia and if you look at this it is broader above and it is narrow below so it is funnel shape and we can see here it is enclosing or surrounding here the blood vessels which are these blood vessels the femoral artery the femoral vein and we also have a compartment here which looks almost empty and has got a lymph node here and this compartment right this is known as the femoral femoral canal so what exactly is femoral sheath we can define it as it is a funnel shaped facial sheath that surrounds the upper 3 or 4 cm of the femoral vessels and also encloses femoral canal where exactly it is located it is located in the femoral triangle so how it is formed the as i said it is made up of deep fascia so here we can see in this picture this is the inguinal ligament right so that is going to separate the pelvis from the thigh so our femoral sheath is present exactly here below the inguinal ligament enclosing the femoral artery femoral vein and a canal here that is femoral canal and here we can see the external iliac vessels you start calling them femoral vessel as soon as they cross the inguinal ligament or they pass behind the inguinal ligament now when these vessels uh sorry vessels are passing behind the inguinal ligament they are enclosed in facial sheath so here the anterior aspect of this sheath is formed by fascia transversalis right so anterior abdominal wall we have the three muscles the external oblique internal oblique and transversus abdominis and deep to that we have the fascia transversalis so that fascia transversalis is going to form the sheath as these vessels they reach the thigh and the posterior aspect of the sheath that will be contributed by this fascia and which is this fascia this fascia is the fascia iliaca which is covering the iliacus muscle so here we have iliacus and psoas muscle so this fascia is going to form the posterior uh, sheath part of the femoral sheath here so it is formed anteriorly by fascia transversalis which is present here and posteriorly by the fascia iliaca which is present there and if you see clearly you will find here that there is another structure which i have not labeled but you can see here this is femoral nerve so femoral nerve is not enclosed in the femoral sheath it lies outside the femoral sheath now here is in this uh, diagram also one can appreciate this is a sagittal section we can see this is anterior abdominal wall the deepest uh, muscle layer will be the transversus abdominis and still deep to that we have the fascia transversalis so this when uh, the vessels they pass from the pelvis to the thigh you can see this extends downwards anterior to the uh, femoral vessels and will form the anterior aspect of the femoral sheath here we can see this is the iliacus muscle and the fascia covering that is the fascia iliaca and this also gets prolonged as the vessels external iliac vessels they reach the thigh and we call them as femoral vessels so this is going to form the posterior part of the uh, femoral sheath that is fascia iliaca now femoral sheath is divided into compartments three compartments and let us look at their contents but before we consider that let us look at the shape of this femoral sheath now if you look at the femoral sheath it is funnel shaped but it is asymmetrical because its lateral wall is vertical and is longer as compared to medial wall which is shorter and it is oblique now femoral sheath you can see is open above to allow passage to femoral vessels and to the lymphatics but it is closed below because the anterior and posterior walls of the femoral sheath they are going to merge with the adventitia of femoral vessels so that's why below it is closed now as i said earlier the femoral sheath is divided into three compartments by two fibrous septa you can see here one and the second fibrous septa now this is medial side and this is the lateral side this is the cross section through the upper part of the femoral sheath this is medial side and this is lateral side so let us now look at the three compartments one by one 
the lateral most compartment you can see here this is the lateral most compartment it is also known as arterial compartment and why it is known as arterial compartment because the femoral artery passes through this compartment and along with the femoral uh, artery anterolaterally in this compartment you also have a nerve passing through this and that nerve is the femoral branch of genito femoral nerve so this is the femoral branch of genito femoral nerve so lateral compartment has got two structures one artery femoral artery and one nerve femoral branch of genito femoral nerve and then we have here the intermediate compartment so this intermediate compartment is also known as venous compartment why because obviously the femoral will vein that passes through this compartment and the medial most compartment which you can see here is actually the smallest compartment and this is also known as lymphatic compartment it contains one lymph node also which belongs to the deep inguinal group of lymph nodes and that lymph node is known as the node or gland of clocket or rosenmuller what it drains i'll tell you a little later plus there will be lymphatics here which will be connecting the deep inguinal group of lymph nodes with the external iliac group of lymph lymph nodes so this that's why this is known as the lymphatic compartment and uh, obviously there is loose areolar tissue also present within this compartment now let us revise the contents of each compartment one by one medial compartment it is also called as femoral canal and it is filled with areolar tissue contains a lymph node that is gland of clocket or rosenmuller and it drains gland spinelis or clitoris clitoris in females and gland spinelis in case of males this is very very important asked in mcqs right you should know the gland of clocket or rosenmuller what it drains then we have the mean intermediate compartment femoral vein sorry femoral vein passes through this and then lateral compartment it allows the passage of femoral artery and femoral branch of genito femoral nerve now let us look in detail the femoral canal because this is uh, very important uh, clinically and surgically because this is a gap here potential gap here which may allow uh, the occurrence of hernia right certain structures from the abdomen like intestine they may pass through this so this is a weak point in the femoral sheath so that's why femoral canal has got great clinical importance or significance so here we can see the dotted line you can see red color this is the femoral canal so this is the medial compartment of the femoral sheath it is conical in shape and it is wider above and narrow below what is the length of this length is approximately 1.5 cm and the width that is at the top is also 1.5 cm it contains some areolar tissue we have already seen and a lymph node that is the deep of uh, deep inguinal group of lymph nodes uh, the clockets or rosenmuller lymph node remember what it drains gland spinelis in males and clitoris in females now its upper end which you see here this is known as femoral ring right this from here it becomes continuous with the abdominal cavity but there is a septum which is present which blocks it a peritoneal uh, septa is present femoral septa we call it which almost blocks this now let us look at the boundaries of femoral ring so here we can see this is the femoral ring right here we will have the femoral sheath you can see the three compartments femoral canal uh then for the femoral vein then for the femoral artery so the uppermost part of the femoral canal that is the femoral ring let us look its boundaries now so anteriorly what binds this we have the inguinal ligament this green structure you can see extending from pubic tubercle till the anterior superior iliac spine this is inguinal ligament that bounds the femoral ring anteriorly what do we have now uh posteriorly posteriorly you can see here the pubis bone and this part is known as pectin pubis some of the books are going to mention the pectineus muscle along with the fascia obviously this muscle takes origin from here right and some will uh, write the pectineal ligament so that is all true because they are all attached to this part right so but just remember this is a bony area part of the pubic bone right the pectin pubis okay then 
The third thing is the medial boundary. The medial boundary is again formed by a ligament. And this ligament is known as this triangular ligament which you can see here. This is known as lacunar ligament. And laterally what do we have? We have the fibrous septa of the femoral sheath separating it from the veins. right? So these are the boundaries. And as I said earlier, femoral ring is closed above by extra peritoneal tissue, which forms the femoral septum. So you have extra peritoneal uh, loose areolar tissue only, which is going to uh, form the femoral septum. By mistake, I think in my previous this thing a slide, I said uh, the peritoneum, not the peritoneum. In fact, peritoneum will be lying above that, right? But uh, loose connective tissue, which is present as extra peritoneal tissue, that will be blocking it. But that is not going to stop the passage of the lymphatic because it is so loosely arranged. Now coming to the applied aspect of this, that is femoral hernia. So what exactly is femoral hernia? Femoral hernia is abnormal protrusion of abdominal content. Usually it is loops of small intestine through the femoral canal. Hernia is in fact the protrusion of any viscera, right, through a potential gap into an area which is not its normal site right so that is hernia so here in case of femoral hernia we will have the protrusion of intestine through the femoral canal which you can see here these are the loops of the small intestine and they have protruded or entered into the femoral canal through the femoral ring and now we call this condition as the femoral hernia now this femoral hernia is more common in case of females why is it so? Because the femoral canal is wider in females. And why this canal is wider in females? Because females have a wider pelvis, right? So because the femoral ring, the dimension will be more, the diameter of the femoral ring will be more in case of females. So chances of having femoral hernia will be also more in case of females. Now, in the femoral hernia, where exactly it is located? You can see here, this structure is the pubic tubercle and it is located inferolateral, right? Inferior, you can see here, and lateral to the pubic tubercle. Why I'm mentioning this is because in case of inguinal hernia, inguinal canal lies above the medial part of the inguinal ligament. Here it, it lies, the inguinal canal. So inguinal hernia, in fact, is superior superior right it is superior medial to the pubic tubercle so that's what you have to remember uh, the inguinal hernia is superior medial to the pubic tubercle whereas femoral hernia is inferior lateral to the pubic tubercle now let us look at this hernial sac what kind of uh, passage right will be formed and how it will descend so we will see if you can see here the sac which would be containing loops of intestine here right here this is the femoral ring this is the saphenous opening you can see in the deep fascia of the thigh and this is the inguinal ligament right so how this uh, sac goes it enters the femoral canal through the femoral ring which you can see here so it will enter through that and then after that, it is going to bulge anteriorly through the saphenous opening, right? After pushing the cribriform fascia forward. And after that, what happens? It is going to bend superior laterally and towards the inguinal ligament. So first, it descends down through the femoral ring, right? Goes down through the femoral ring. Then it bulges anteriorly through the saphenous opening and then bends superior laterally towards the inguinal ligament. Why this direction is known uh, should be known to you because if you have to reduce the hernia, that means push the contents back into their abdomen, uh, that is the intestine back into the abdomen, then you have to put the pressure in the reverse direction, right? So first you are going to push where? In which direction? Inferomedially, right? It is going superior laterally. So inferomedially you are going to push and then posteriorly and then upwards. So in the reverse direction, uh, it has to be pushed. Now what are the coverings, right? This is a sac, hernial sac. Uh, the intestinal loops are inside. So what all the intestinal loops are going to push before they enter the femoral ring? 
first is the femoral septum obviously right i remember the femoral ring above that we have the extra peritoneal tissue so they are going to push that that is going to form its covering then anterior wall of femoral sheath right because the femoral canal is present within the femoral sheath so anterior wall of the femoral sheath that will be also pushed forward and finally it is going to push forward what the cribriform fascia which covers the saphenous opening so these are the three coverings of femoral hernia femoral septum that is nothing but extra peritoneal tissue anterior wall of femoral sheath and the cribriform fascia now sometimes what happens the you cannot reduce it manually and uh, you have to do the surgical uh, reduction of femoral hernia and especially when the hernia hernia that is strangulated so what is strangulation what that does that mean strangulation means the that means the blood supply right to the intestine that is compromised now when the intestinal loop will pass through the femoral ring here the area is restricted so surrounding structures they are going to put pressure you have a bone behind you have ligament medially and anteriorly also so this area becomes very restricted and rigid so because of this the blood supply to the intestine that will be compromised right strangulation means just say uh, it is like you strangulate you uh, uh, strangulate a person on, uh, in the neck similarly that strangulation is occurring at the femoral ring so strangulation of femoral hernia may occur due to sharp stiff boundaries of the femoral ring that is the blood supply to the intestinal uh, loops may will be compromised so what has to be done now now what you can do can you cut inguinal ligament no so anterior wall of the femoral uh, ring cannot be cut posteriorly we have the pectin pubis the bone and the pectineus muscle you cannot cut that also now medially you would not like to go because you have the femoral vein so you the only option left is uh, you have to increase the space of the femoral ring so which structure can be cut you can only cut the ling lacunar ligament so lacunar ligament has to be divided to relieve the strangulation right now here one care has to be taken what care one must take now here if you can see this is external iliac artery and one of its branch this is known as inferior epigastric artery usually gives it gives a small pubic branch and that is that also runs lateral to the femoral ring and passes through the uh, obturator foramen and anastomoses with the pubic branch of obturator artery which is in fact a branch of internal iliac artery usually right so this is the normal course usually occurs 80% of the people it is a small branch known as pubic branch of inferior epigastric artery but sometimes what may happen you may have an abnormal obturator artery instead of in 20% of the people instead of internal iliac artery this uh, obturator artery this takes origin from inferior epigastric artery now here also you have two cases suppose it runs lateral to the femoral ring it is safe but if this abnormal obturator artery is running along the medial boundary of the femoral ring then the surgeon cuts along this lacunar ligament divides the lacunar ligament it can lead to severe hemorrhage here if this abnormal or accessory or aberrant obturator artery is cut while reducing the hernia so this care has to be taken